so we can be able to begin now. And thank you very yeah, much yeah. for those sent sentiments and uh, the, the many more that we will share. I've yeah. seen, you know, people coming in and I know many more will come in, but the intention is to start on time and also finish on time because, you know, during this time, there are so many things happening, even though very yeah. few are actually happening, but again, a number of things are happening. So right. um, let's take a very short time. Eh? And now, now this starts, uh, we've now started formally. The wish of this meeting is we will just take a first few minutes to just introduce ourselves, maybe our works. If you have them, you may show, or you can just tell us briefly about them. And I encourage everyone to, to take part in this. Then uh, we will then go to the, the, the bit of, um, I'll just make a brief presentation on you know, writing during this time. Then a, a friend of ours called Decca William will be able to make a very brief but interesting presentation again on the same, then we will close. So let's start from general introduction, just asking, all of you, all of us, to share about you and maybe about what you've written, what you are do, 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 doing during this time. So your introduction should capture, uh, it should start from your name, uh, your writing and reading history, which book are you reading now? What are you writing at the moment? You can just tell us briefly about that and any other thing you'd wish to share on the same. Yeah, so, in no specific order, or um, I don't know if order would do, but uh, let me start from Alex, Alex Muge. Fibian, welcome. <laughs> well, I will, I will just ask um, Hello. anyone, Alex? Hello, Hello. Yes, can, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Uh, Speed, please. Okay, thank you, Gabriel. Uh, my name is Alex Osunga. Yeah. I am a cybersecurity specialist, not a writer. I know everyone here might be a writer. <laughs> uh, but I work, <laughs> I work at I Love Africa. Um, so uh, the reason why I've decided to uh, join this meeting today is uh, because mm -hmm. I want to be a scholar and... Um, <laughs> Sorry. So oh, can you hear me now? Yes, proceed, Alex. We can hear you. Okay. Okay. The, uh, I was saying that the reason why I've decided to join this meeting today is that I want to be a scholar, and I'm currently working on uh, uh, my thesis. Yeah. And you see, for you to write a good paper, you need uh, uh, you need to be a good writer. Yeah. So it's it's my first time, and I hope I'm going to learn from the rest who've been in this field for maybe some good time. Yeah. And so the paper that I'm writing, I hope it's something that would maybe most of you would uh, have an interest in. It's something to yeah. do with a SIM swap, mobile SIM swap. Yeah. I'm doing something called uh, multi-factor authentication to help in uh, mitigating SIM swap and uh, currently doing that with the Safaricom. Yeah. Ah, thank you very much, Alex. Eh? You know, you mentioned okay. that you're not a writer. Then you contradicted yourself. You said you are not a writer, but then you said you are writing. <laughs> I think yeah. it's one of those things you don't run away from. And uh, we will just be able to get to learn more about this as time goes by. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you and welcome. Beth, you may speak from there. Beth, can you hear me? Sorry, I had my, my uh, thingy off. Okay, my official name is Yuka Beth Odiambo. So I come from South Nyanza. Right okay. now, I'm not there. <laughs> I work here in the United States. I'm a professor at the University yeah. of Pennsylvania. I just got my full professor last year. So I've been one year full professor. Um, Congratulations, huh? <laughs> yeah, now, now, I, now I tell you because I worked so hard for it. But um, after I've said it, that's it. It's over. I'm, I'm just any other person. Um, I've written, I have to, I want to say about four books, uh, but they're all mixed genres. Um, I was telling Gabriel, I wrote, I wrote a textbook which I use for my class, social studies for young children. 
<clears throat> I train teachers. I train elementary teachers who are going to teach children from pre-K through four. Um, so I, I, <clears throat> I wrote a book th that I used to teach social studies. Mm. Then I, 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 I write fiction. My yeah. first, my fa first fiction is Auma's Long Run. Yeah. And has to do with uh, the, 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 the HIV AIDS era. You guys yeah. might enjoy it. I think the young people will enjoy it. And even adults over here in the US, um, it got a lot of, um, a lot of re recognition. I think it's a, it's a good book, and just not because I wrote it. Then yeah. right now, I'm shifting to, to self-publishing my books. This was, uh, Aoma's tr uh, long run was traditionally published. It is a yeah. long story, you guys, just like you're saying. They don't rip you off. But the, the tradition of publishing takes almost two years or three years to get a book out. And they do yeah. a great job with it. They help you with everything you need. But you only get te five to 10%. So yeah. you can imagine uh, if a book does well where you're, you're selling thousands of copies, you're only getting pennies on it. So I've shifted to self-publishing. Yeah. Self-publishing, it's taken me a long time. I've spent a lot of money, but I'm starting yeah. to the hang of it so some of the small books that i published so that just to get a feel for it uh is fiction it's animals dakiana dakiana mm -hmm. lost again yeah Dakiana's farm adventure yeah. um i i that I, I wrote them i made all the mistakes i'm i'm, I'm getting i'm getting used to it very expensive to publish such a book by yourself yeah. So right now, my the next book that's coming out on May fifth is a uh, diary of a fifth grade bully. Yeah, uh, I was telling um, uh, Gabriel that it's it's set in America, but only kid can read it because a bully is a bully. It doesn't matter yeah. whether it's black, white, blue, yellow, or red. And so that's where um, that's where I am right now. I'm okay. starting to learn how to promote my book, which I had never done before. So I'm 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 going I'm on Facebook. I'm trying Facebook I'll say Facebook ads. Yeah. I'm try, I'm going to uh, start a blog. I'm just yeah. going to do everything to see if I can sell as many books as possible. And when I'm done with that, I'll tell you guys how to sell books. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, Beth, for that. And it's great to know you and to to know that you have gone through the struggles and you are still energetic. You are still, you are still willing to go through it. Huh? Yes. Um, I hope we'll be able to learn more. And even from this introduction, the wish is maybe people can get familiar with each other. So yes. you can maybe in the process, you can pick a question or you can uh, maybe you want to ask a specific person a question, you can pick it and maybe note it down, then you can be able to ask. So. Because some of these experiences, the reason why we would really wish that we have more of this is some of these experiences, what you are going through, someone has already gone through it. So they have one or two things to share on the same. So I encourage everyone to, you know, take note even as people introduce themselves. And now because we are 22, we may need to take a shorter time to introduce ourselves. So we may take a few seconds, but be as generous as possible. So thank you very much, Beth, and welcome. Aileen, Mabel. Over to you. Tobias, welcome. <laughs> Aileen Mabel, are you, are you there? Or Tobias, now that you're here, please tell us more about yourself. Introduce yourself. In your name. Yes, Aileen? Uh... We're struggling to hear you, Eileen. Eileen? Hello. Okay. Elishama? <laughs> hey, Elishama? Uh -huh. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Yes. I don't know if I'm audible. Yes, we are able to hear you and see you as well. Good to see you. 
Uh, thanks a lot, Gabriel. Welcome. So tell us briefly about you. Uh, I believe I'm one of the blackest guys. I don't need to get it. You can see me. Hello? Hello? Go ahead. Yes. Go ahead, please. Uh, Elisham? Yes. I'm a student of Masai Mara University. I've been uh, following the uh, writers' guild of the sideline, but I haven't really got the chance to join you guys during your uh, expert years. So uh, we're over the uh, online platform. I believe this is the right platform that I've had to share with you. Actually, I'm still. I have a question. Uh, done thing about it, but I have a blog on WordPress at the Congo Africa. Yeah, you declare there is some much. Thank you very much, eh? Elishama. Um, I'm sorry, the, the it was breaking a bit, but I hope we can be able then to share more even during this, this discussion. But if I got you, is that you've been following Writers Guild for some time and you are a blogger as well. At yeah. Uh, Africa. Yes. So you can even share the link in, in the chat, in the chat section. Exactly. I'll do okay. uh, Tom, uh, Tobias Bele. <laughs> yes. Uh, thank you so much, Gabriel. Uh, it's a pleasure to join uh, all of you. I'm not at home. I'm at work. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, one of the essential service workers. Who knew? I'm, I'm currently in school. Uh, I work at JK Yacht. Tobias Bella is my name. I work in the corporate communications office. And uh, until yesterday, we were home, but we were summoned by the vice chancellor to come do some coverage for some innovations that are being worked on here towards COVID-19. Okay. Uh, in, innovations towards uh, ventilators, face masks, uh, contact tracing applications. So some of us have had to come back to work, but I just live nearby, so there's no, there's no cause for alarm. Okay. Uh, and I actually have to go, uh, but uh, I, really, I, I really wanted to uh, join this meeting. I've just been called to go to the assembly hall. Currently, I'm, I'm writing op-eds, opinion pieces for the dailies. A few have been published. I've always wanted to do that, but it's taken me forever. I didn't know it would be so easy to get published in the papers. Mm -hmm. uh, currently reading uh, The 33 Strategies of War by Robert Greene. Mm -hmm. uh, also working on my master's research. Uh, I'm a master's student in corporate communication and management. Uh, currently working on my thesis is uh, relates to crisis communication and management. And uh, also to say thank you for Writers Guild. There was a bunch of links that you sent some time back. Yeah. Um, and, and they've been very useful. I hope each and every person uh, gets to work with them and gets to, you know, read some of the links, some of the books that are in that, uh, in that, uh, whatever, that collection. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you so much, Gabriel. And uh, to everyone who is in the meeting, thank you so much. Uh, stay safe. I have to go. But thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Toby. And I'm happy that you benefited from the link and you are yes. uh, at work. You have to yes. tell us the stories that are happening and what yes, you're yes. doing in school. So thank yes. you very much for that. And I'm happy that you are here and that you are reading. Eh? Always, every, oh, yes. everyone who is introducing them, themselves must mention what they are reading because that is the greatest fodder for a writer. So thank Absolutely. you very much, Toby, for that. Thank you. Uh, Eugene? Lomosi. Oh, hello, hi everyone. Yes, we can hear you, Eugene. Please proceed. Oh, okay. Uh, actually, uh, my name is Eugene eh? uh, Lomosi, as mentioned. Actually, I'm a digital marketing enthusiast, and I'm also working in the financial services industry, a micro lending firm. Uh, at the moment, actually, uh, uh, in terms of writing, I run a, a blog uh, on Tumblr. I, I can share the link later on. Uh, yeah. And I'm also I, currently, I'm reading a, a fiction a novel uh, called Watching You by Lisa Jewell. Uh, thank mm -hmm. you, everyone. Thank you very much, Eugene. You may share the link to your blog through the chat. 
Okay. Then if you're able to get the chat, you can be able to share the link to your blog there, then you can be able to, yeah. And okay. now that uh, Beth mentioned that she's learning marketing because now she's publishing her own books. Yes. You are a digital marketing enthusiast. I don't know if you can connect and see what you can do together. That can be a possibility. Perhaps I look forward to the same. I will see to it. Initiate the conversation with Beth. She's 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 right here. <laughs> okay, okay. Let me see how we wow, can go. Perfect. About Fanon, Kihu, over to you. Yes, Fanon, please proceed. Uh, Gideon, Gideon Mutai, you may go ahead and introduce yourself. <laughs> Yeah. Hillary, would you count what we had shared earlier as the introduction or would you go? <laughs> My Yes, yes. My name is Hillary. I'm an author. I do a column for the nation as well called the Diaries of the and I'm a TV producer. My book is called, my first book is called The Boy Shoes. There's the hard copy and the soft copy can be found on Amazon. There's Amazon copy as well. So best can actually access it. Uh, I'm reading through graphic J's for judgment at the moment. And yeah. I'm also writing another manuscript. Not writing, yeah. actually, uh, because Films. I have a new book coming out by me this year. Okay. It's, it's, it's the one that follows this one. So this is the, the growing up as a kid. Now there's now the version of the adolescent page. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Hilary, and welcome. You will tell us later on the project that you, you are conceptualizing regarding helping people tell their stories. That can be, it can benefit some of the people who are here. Okay, thank you. Uh, Kui Gitonga, over Hi. to you. Hello, how are you Kui, we can hear you. Please proceed. Okay, sorry, I'm just gonna um, not turn on my camera because of um, internet connectivity, but I'm here. Yeah. So I'm just joining the conversation and happy to see you guys all online. Okay. Hello, Kui. Yeah, I'm here. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you very much. You may tell us briefly about your writing and reading history or what you're doing, um, doing the same. Okay. Um, I do children's stories. Um, I have a children's book about the women who fought for independence. It's called Those That Came Before Us, yeah. Women Warriors. Um, and now I've just started to venture into short story writing. Yeah. Um, yeah, I attended one of your ecclesias last year about short story writing. Yeah. So uh, it gave me a lot of inspiration to just, um, yeah, try out another venue and see if I can hack it. Mm, okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Kui. And uh, we hope. We share more and even maybe feed into your short story writing, connect with some people here who okay. are doing the same and uh, generally grow in that area. Yeah, looking uh, forward. Thank you and welcome. Thanks. Yeah, Fanon, are you there? Okay, I see we, we've not connected with Fanon yet, but Kevin Gundi, you may proceed. Kevin? Okay. <laughs> Let's tell, please, you may introduce yourself. Buzz. Hello? <laughs> Let's tell. Okay. Liz? Liz? Eka Koro, you may proceed. Yeah, hello everyone. Hi, Liz, how are you? 
I'm fine, thank you. Yeah, my name is Elizabeth Ekakora, or Liz. Mm -hmm. um, okay, uh, I love writing. Yeah. And I'm an author. Of, I self-published my first book last mm -hmm. year, 5th October. Yeah. I don't have a copy with it now. Um, I, uh, I wasn't planning to attend the meeting, but I'm at the office. Okay. So it's called Imagine a World and Create It. I'll also share an Amazon link here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I also write op opinion ads on Diaspora Messenger. I'll share the link. Yeah. 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 And I'm currently reading Beyond Intelligence by Wale Akinyemi. Mm -hmm. He's a Nigerian mm -hmm. based in Kenya. I think you see ah. his writings. Yeah. Thank you very much, Liz. Eh? I think you're the only one who is attending this uh, this meeting with a mask. Eh? We should <laughs> yeah, yeah, we should follow your example. Eh? Uh, thank you very much and welcome. Good okay, to know you. you. I've just been seeing some of your work, and I'm very happy to put the face to the name today. Uh, Lydia Kimani, over to you. Lydia? Okay. Uh, Priscilla, and thank you yeah. very much for coming, Ali. I think you are the earliest here. So I think we need to, we need to introduce <laughs> Ali Bada words and give you. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm still learning how to connect. So technology is not my friend. Okay. <laughs> but I have to do it now. Thank you very much. I have just come to realize that I'm dealing with professionals. Now I don't even know what to say. I'm <laughs> dealing with everybody is an author, is a writer, a journalist. My name is Priscilla. Yeah. In a, I'm an office administrator. Yeah. Apart from my thesis, I've not written anything much. But I was planning to 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 publish. An article I did on stress management as a place of work. Yeah. I'm still collecting enough funds so that I may release it maybe in four parts. Yeah. I'm currently doing my thesis in leadership, uh, transformational leadership in workplace, and how it affects uh, employees. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm a student. Yeah. I'm doing my master's with uh, Management University of Africa. Yeah. Um, willingly, I might graduate this year. But if uh, Corona extends, maybe until yeah. next year. Yeah. I'm reading, I'm reading a similar key for. Yeah. It's a, Swahili, it's a Swahili, I think it's a literature book, but it's a Swahili book. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Priscilla. Uh, you said you are a bit scared that everyone here is a professional writer, uh, journalist. Mm -hmm. Well, that could be true partly, but uh, we are all here to learn. So mm -hmm. feel at home and feel free to share. And also, yeah. being in this environment will encourage you to start off. Eh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I really want to connect with Beth because I want to go that line where she is. Yeah, yes, please, please feel free to reach out to her and connect right here before we go. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much and welcome. Thank Lydia. you. Welcome. I can be able to see you. So, proceed. Yes. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Lydia Kimani, as you've been told. And um, I'm, I've been a member of Writers Guild for two years now and some months. And I just recently graduated from the writing course attended just recently. And um, I have mostly been writing technical writing, you know, modules, because my career, I'm a lecturer. And I also, on the side, uh, I'm a, an assessor of language at the British Council. I also do some training on uh, workplace communication and editing. So mostly it has been technical writing, but uh, I'm hoping that I can also do opinion writing um, as I go along. Yeah. And currently what I'm reading is uh, Redeeming Love by Francine Rivers. 
and mm -hmm. uh, Christian based uh, uh, literature. And um, as I try to improve my typing skills, which are not very good. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Well, thank you very much, Lydia. Uh, we have a long history, and thank you very much for coming and uh, sharing about you. Maybe some people would have some questions which they could ask you regarding the assessment of language at British Council or some of the work that you do. That we'll be able to get into time. Thank you very much. Welcome. Uh, Michelle, Nina, <laughs> are you able to hear me now? Okay, maybe Nancy Mora, you may proceed and introduce yourself. Okay, <laughs> Nina Opicha, are you there? Yes, I'm there. Oh, perfect. Please tell us a little bit about you, generously. All right, so my name is Nina Opicha, as you have seen on the screen. Um, yeah. by Profession, I am a HR manager by yeah. career, I should say, and I am also doing some freelance work as a writer and as a fashion designer. Yeah, uh, and a bit interior design too. So, how did I end up into writing? I just got bored one day at home, and I decided I need to do something something for myself, and yeah. then I started writing. Yeah, so I have um, three books written. Yeah. Yeah. Um, of course, copyrighted, and uh, two of them are self-published on Amazon. Yeah. One is at a local publisher, and my God, they're taking forever. I think it's been there for like three years now, and then I just had your story when we logged in. I'm like, by Jesus, have mercy on us. <laughs> so, yeah, so if I can get a publisher in out there, I'd be so happy so that I can withdraw that... Um, book from the local publisher yeah and what else do i do i do a bit of writing online okay yeah. I, I i don't like calling myself a blogger but i write online i write articles and books online and i i have a um, website yeah yeah where you can find my works so yeah. maybe i'll share the website on the on the chat side yeah. chat you can share yeah, yeah. Yeah, so basically, yeah, so that's it. How did I come to know about Writers Guild? I think just my passion for really wanting to write professionally, yeah. even yeah. though I've not been in a writing class, I have no idea of linguistics. You are talking about genres and all that. My goodness, I have no idea. Yeah. But <laughs> what I know I have is a lot of good imagination and writing skills, that's it. So, yeah, so that's how. That's how I landed into Writers Guild, I guess. I was just on my Facebook uh, looking for writing things, and I saw you guys, and I liked your page, and I guess that's how I ended up here. So thanks for this forum. I think I'll be really um, informed, yeah. um, having no clue of this um, professional writing field. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Nina. I think you are you are right at home, as we've always been telling you. So I hope we can be able to travel together even maybe share some pieces of advice regarding your publishing, some of which we'll be able to learn during this session. So you are in, in the right place. And having people who have traveled the journey you are traveling, I think you are really, really in the right place. So welcome. Uh, Tony, are you able to speak briefly now? <laughs> <coughs> oh, yeah, it is I now. Yes, yes. OK, uh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, everybody, uh, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Otoa Sifuna. Uh, when I was at the university, they used to call me Otoa Garang. I don't know why. Uh, comrades used to tell uh, to tell me that uh, I resemble the letter John de Mabior Garang, both in physique and uh, in what uh, I used to do because I used to advocate for the rights and the needs of the comrades. Anyway, uh, hello. Yes, yes, yes. Please proceed. Yeah. So I've said my name is Otto Sifuna. And yeah. That's not a very, uh, very strange name. You've seen uh, Otto Sifuna on the mainstream medium. Yeah. Basically, that is where I put my works. I am invited uh, time and again on um, mainstream, uh, especially Kenyan mainstream media and occasionally the international media 
to yeah. put my skill, uh, whether I'm going there to talk matters, pedagogy in uh, schools, whether I'm going there to talk about uh, literary aesthetics, but yeah. uh, basically I'm an active uh, teacher. When I say an active teacher, I mean I'm uh, living and practicing uh, uh, teaching. I currently yeah. teach at the, at the MPESA Foundation Academy, uh, yeah. which is uh, a school uh, that was founded by Safaricom based here in uh, Thika. Yeah. I teach uh, English and literature, and yeah. the books have been my great passion. I cannot say that I'll be where I am now if uh, books, and especially uh, literature books, uh, one yeah. of the other, really helped uh, me a lot. They also uh, catalyzed my writing skills where I have also put in one or two books in it. Uh, basically, I am biased towards writing um, books that are consumed by high school students. So I've done um, the poetry, uh, uh, poetry analysis of yeah. uh, two uh, uh, great poets. One is Okot Pabitek. I'm sure mm -hmm. uh, some people pronounce it as Okot Pabitek. It is Okot Pabitek. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, David uh, Rubadiri's uh, poetry. Uh, I have also put in um, quite a number of uh, works into yeah. oral literature. I realize that oral literature is not um, a very concept that is internationally acclaimed. And, yeah. and therefore, I'm doing a lot in terms of folklore, which is um, a very wide field. And um, I, I, I said charity begins at home. So I have uh, done over a thousand Bukusu proverbs. Bukusu is one of the sub-dialects of uh, the Luya in Bungoma. And, and yeah. I've done a thousand uh, translated uh, 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 proverbs that capture the socioeconomic, yeah. cultural, and, and lifestyle of the, uh, the people in that particular region. So I would say that uh, this is a very good platform. And uh, like I did tell you in the informal uh, setting, uh, that uh, this is going to create uh, an avenue where like-minded uh, minded people can actually come. And, and who knows, uh, from such a, a platform, one can come up with an idea even to write. And, and uh, you remember when you are, you, are, you, are, you are just talking about what catalyzes somebody to write. And imagination can yeah, actually come yeah. out of this. So in a nutshell, that is who I am. Uh, yeah. When you go to uh, to YouTube and just type Otoa Sifuna, you will mm. see quite a number of works that uh, I have done uh, uh, in this uh, in this particular area. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, Bana Sifuna. Actually, the okay. maybe most people are familiar with your face, having watched you in on TV talking about some of these things you are saying. It is a good thing yeah. that we and we all have the same wish to write and to promote writing wherever we are. So thank sure. you very much and welcome. Fibian Hudama, <laughs> I know you will have a big fight with us and I just want to give you the chance to start that fight of why we are not speaking in Kiswahili and we are speaking in English. Fibian, please. <laughs> are you there, Fibian? Okay. Uh, Trippy, hi. You may introduce yourself as we close on this. Hello. Yes, please proceed. Okay, I'm Mia Ningara. Ah, okay. AKA Trippi. I'm a writer currently working on an anthology of short stories. And yeah. uh, I also have a website. I'll share yeah. the link uh, in the chat spot. Yeah. And uh, currently I'm reading uh, Breaking Down. Yeah. Career-wise, I'm a medical uh, lab technologist. Okay. So currently, I'm one of the essential services. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ian. I didn't know it was you, but I'm very happy that you are here. And maybe later on, you'll be able to tell us uh, uh, briefly about your, the short story collection that you've been working on, but uh, that will come later. Okay. Okay. And uh, William Decker, who is one of our presenters, will be presenting shortly. Uh, you may introduce yourself and just tell, tell us briefly about you. Decker? 
Okay, I just had to unmute that. Thank you so much. My name is Deca William, as Gabriel has mentioned. I'm a communication specialist. I do communication at the UN Environment Program. I'm happy to be part of this forum and looking forward to share more. And I'm having my lunch. <laughs> 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 Thank, you. Thank you very much, Deca. <laughs> your session is coming just shortly, so you will have to take your lunch very quickly so that it gives you time to, to pick from there. Uh, is there anyone who was not there when you were introducing ourselves and now they are able to? If they can be able to introduce themselves as we close on this? Anyone who has not introduced themselves? Yes? Yes. Yes, Fanon. Please make it brief. <laughs> yeah, how are you? So I was trying to, I, I hope you can hear me. Yes, yes, clearly. Yes, I feel like I can just uh, put my fingers there and I crush your head because of technology. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm using my phone. Crush your phone instead. Yes. So, <laughs> so I was trying to, actually I was trying to, to, to press the audio button. Yeah. And it had, uh, it had uh, caused a bit of problems, but now I'm okay. So my name is uh, Fanon Kihu. Uh, I'm a writer. Yeah. Uh, writer by, I don't know whether you can say writer by passion or writer by education, but professionally, yeah. um, I'm an economist. So I have a journal called, I founded a journal called the Biz Economist Journal. In fact, we are even uh, inviting inviting uh, research uh, articles and opinion articles. Of of late, I've been um, of late, I've been really working on fiction. Yeah. Um, a better part of last year, I had worked on so many opinion articles. So, I, uh, but I had started doing fiction from me, thanks to the Writers Guild Kenya. So now I'm exploring that area. Yeah and as i hope to enhance more so currently i'm reading um how europe underdeveloped africa mm. by uh, walter rodney rodney yeah okay and um yeah maybe i can share some of the things i've learned from the book yes 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 actually you can maybe that we will give that time towards the end Okay. Uh, if you have any links, like the, your article which was published in Kalahari Review, you can share it in the chat. Then you can also take note yes. of the other resources that are being shared by other people. So, oh, thank let me you do. very much, <laughs> everyone, for sharing uh, details about you. This is very helpful to help us have a productive time. I see our time is, 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 is moving very fast, but I hope we will be able to catch up. So I would just wish to make a brief presentation on something based on an article that we wrote together with Vera on something which we wrote it because many people are asking us questions regarding that. So someone would call and they ask, you know, I have this idea, I want to put it down, what do I do? Or you find someone who is uh, maybe who is very resourceful and in your view, is someone who should put ideas, the ideas that they have down on paper. But somehow, they are not doing that. So when you ask them, then they tell you, I want to write, but I don't know where to start. So we wrote an article, which, if you allow me, I'll be able to present now. Um, so I, I'll, I'll be able to share, then you'll be able to see in your screen, so that we can just follow together. Um, So, are you able to see my screen from there? Yes, it's loading, so it's here. Thank you. Oh, perfect. Thank you. So, we, we wrote this article based on the question that people were asking. I want to write, where do I start? So, if you allow me, I'm going to make this presentation in this manner. I ask someone to read a paragraph, then... Uh, then I just explain a bit of it. Then we'll just do that until the end. Then we give we, we give Deca a chance to, to pick from there. So maybe I can ask Deca to start. <laughs> uh, you could start from, I am thinking of writing here. I am thinking of writing. A beautiful story about my childhood, incorporating some of the lessons I've learned in life 
please advise me. Read the message from a mutual. Read a message from a mutual friend. Yeah. Keep going. Keep going. Many people Point. reach out to us individually, telling us that they want to write and asking for advice. The first piece of advice we give to someone thinking of plunging into writing is write. That's the beginning of and the end of it, the act of writing itself. Everything else we list below is to feed or give you a guiding light. It is only possible to share an idea or a piece of advice on a story that has been written as opposed to an idea that is still in someone's mind, which you don't have access to. Thank you very much, Deca. Uh, so on this, many people, and uh, maybe this happens also to many publishers, people approach publishers and ask them that, or maybe you meet people in events, and uh, or maybe book launches. So they come for your book launch, and then they come to you and tell you, I really want to write. Or, uh, you know, I have this idea in mind. Well, we've, there are many things. Eh? There are many people running classes on how to write. There are many, there are many things happening. If you go to YouTube, you get so many resources regarding the techniques of writing and so many other things relating to writing. But in our view, for an for a writer, the best way to approach it actually is to write. So even if you are approaching a publisher, you should go in this manner. You should write whatever you are thinking of. Then you take it to them and tell them, here is what, here is a book I am planning to write. I have written the first chapter. Here it is. So what would you advise? So the first advice you normally give people is actually right. Do the writing first. So like um, Priscilla, for instance, you, you had mentioned when you were doing the introduction that you, you, know, you feel a bit scared and you don't know where to start. The place to start would be to start actually writing. So maybe you can, the next time you can, you can ask for a chance to present what you've written, even if it is one page. So the best Mr. Dinda, let me yes. just interrupt you. Can we ask those who are not speaking to just mute their mic so that they know so that you only unmute when you want to speak? Yes, please. Yes, now it's clear. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much, Deca, for that. <laughs> uh, so I was saying that the best way to start off is to write. So when you are approaching an editor, do not tell them that you have this beautiful story you want to tell. Write it down, even if it is in a page or two, and tell them that this is what I've written. I want to improve on it, or I want to develop it further. So I hope that may help you start off in your writing. OK, so then we can be able to go to the next. Nina, are you there? You may read, or any other person yes. who feels, yes, you may read starting yes. from Anna. I'm there, and, and unfortunately, I cannot see your screen properly. So that's a bit of a challenge. The wordings are a bit minute. OK, sorry for that. Yeah, it, yeah I'm using my phone. Yeah, yeah. Oh, OK, OK, OK. Anyone who can be able to see it, you may you may read, please. Um, this is Corey. Go ahead. Yes, yes ah, please. Are you getting me? Are you getting, yes, are you getting me? Okay. Um, others ask about publishing before they start writing. More like a woman booking a maternity ward before she's even pregnant, although she might be planning to get pregnant. Here are some ideas that can help you get started on your writing journey. Yes, just proceed, please. Okay, what is your why? Um, just a second, please. Yes. Yeah. Um, a whole chapter of The Craft of Creative Writing by Mugeni Ojiambo and Vera Omwacha covers the overview of writing as a career and the possible writing careers available. Your reason for starting out will sustain your writing. It will inform you how it will inform you how. Uh, be deliberate about it. Evaluate why you want to write and if the reason can only be achieved through writing. Good writing is not for the faint-hearted, so if your why is not convincing, all the best in your ventures. If you are convinced that you must write, tag along. Thank you very much, Koi, for that. Um, here, I don't know if you are familiar with this book uh, called 
Start With Why by Simon Sinek. He explains this idea of why quite uh, elaborately. Allow me to share with you an idea of a friend of mine who reached out to me two weeks ago and told me that she's written a book on addressing some agricultural issues. And her main reason for writing this book was to make money. So she told me from the beginning, how can I publish my book with little funds or how can I invest in my book with very little to a point that I can be able to get as much as possible from my writing? How I is to make money. If you are to maybe approach writing from that point of view, then you'd realize that perhaps there are other ventures that can help you make money quicker than writing. So this, from this aspect, we are asking you to evaluate your why. Why are you even attending this meeting in the first place? Why, do you, why are you writing? Is it something that you think of? Are you writing because you, are, you admire someone who is a writer? Or are you writing maybe to solve uh, a problem that you are seeing around you? Or are you writing to share your story and to what end? You know, Hillary mentioned earlier that uh, the story that he shared about shoes, from the face of it, it looks funny, but it addresses something to do with inequality in society. So what, what is your why? Why do you write? If you, maybe this, and we are also still, all of us are still growing in this area. So you keep asking your why. For me, for instance, I write not so much for the fun of it, but I always write to communicate. Every time I see something, like uh, my latest article, which I shared earlier, was I see most people who are doing good things are very silent. They don't want to talk about them. They, they are consumed. So the world is consumed by the bad news or by the people doing bad things. So I thought of it and said, what if these good people were doing something shared about it? Maybe some of the people who are doing bad things would have an alternative. So why do you write? For me, I write to communicate. I write to, to address some things. It is my way of, it is my social justice. If I see something wrong and I write about it, somehow I feel like I've solved it. So I ask you again, why do you write? Maybe you can be able to think about it and maybe discuss it and mostly think about it to get to a point where now you understand why you really write, because that will give you the energy to keep writing and to put the investment that is needed to keep writing. Okay, then the second one, I hope we are not taking too long. Uh, anyone who can be able to read? Yes, uh, yes. The, the second one. Huh? Yes, yes. Uh, here is better than there. Okay, the best, the best place to start is where you are. With what you are familiar with, for if you have lived in the village all your life, you are better placed to write about your experiences in the village than about uh, Disneyland, which uh, you've only seen in movies. The story is within your surroundings. Can I proceed to three? Right, no, no, maybe you can just pause there briefly. Okay. But uh, here is better than there. This is a concept that has been used by many people in writing. Hillary, yesterday we were in a meeting in a certain writers conference by Vincent de Paul, and Hillary shared that he struggles writing about maybe people's experiences in town. But when you when he starts writing about his village experience about shoes, he can write and write and write. Most of us, we are in context, we are in environment. We are very familiar with our environment. And most people or research has shown that your environment, if you are very familiar with your environment, you are able to describe things with more language. You are able to describe things with more uh, precision. So there is this aspect when you see maybe Gugi Wadiongo is writing on a certain context. Then you also think you say, maybe I can also copy or you do it unconsciously. You copy what someone else is doing not knowing that your contexts are different. So let's, uh, and sorry to go back to this, Priscilla. Let's go back to your, your example. You said you've, you've worked at KPC for some time, Kenya, uh, Kenya Pipeline Corporation for some time, if I'm not wrong. 
And uh, maybe you are familiar with that work environment. So where would you start? Maybe you can, I don't know, but this, this is just an example. Maybe having worked there for some time, you know how things work in the corporate world. Maybe you can even uh, share something relating to that, the corporate world. Or if you are a parent, you are better off writing about parenting or because you've experienced it, you know it. If you've grown up in town, you're better off setting your story in town because you know more things about it. So always, we should always remember that here is better than there, especially when it comes to writing. Though sometimes, because of the people we read and what we write, there may appear attractive, more attractive than here, but here is better than there. I hope that helps. Okay, so then we can go to write daily, then we'll just take two more and conclude this session. Uh, Write daily. Yeah. daily. You will only master the craft of writing and get the benefits that accrue from it if you commit to it. Find a way to write on a daily basis or constantly, let's say three times a week, but do not write occasionally. Have a schedule and have a schedule and do it daily. Let your mind get used to the idea that you are a writer. That uh, that way, it will help the part of you, and it will probably get easier with time for you. Writers write. Thank you very much. Um, this uh, in writing this, we were we were we wanted to emphasize on something to do with habits, forming habits, and consistency. You realize that, and this I picked from Jackson Biko, Biko Zulu, most of you know him as such. He, he said that sometimes he writes and he doesn't get as much response. So people think that maybe, or people share their ideas and say, maybe what he wrote was uh, not as good as his standard, what he should be writing. And uh, this is the case of many people. Sometimes you get it, sometimes you don't get it. But the idea always is to do it every day. If I asked you, why do you brush every day? Why do you brush your teeth every day? Would it not be possible to brush it today thoroughly and not brush it for some time? Or why do you eat every day? Why do you do most of the things that we do every day? You realize that our bodies are used to um, a routine or our bodies are, when we, when we do it often, we get used to it. So even for writing, the writers who only write when they, when they feel like, maybe you write today and you say, oh, I'm in writer's block for the next three months. Then you write at, at around that time, uh, you, you, you take some time again, you write when you feel like, you don't have a schedule. What we advise is put some rhythm to it. If you are writing on Monday, on Wednesday, and on Friday, and if it is on Monday, what time is it? Is it from seven to eight? If it is from seven to eight, how, what is the extent of what you will be writing? Some of these things may vary. Many different people have different ways through which they can be able to do these things, but these are just general ideas that you can be able to, to, to try. So put some rhythm to your writing. If you are writing daily, make it daily. If you are writing maybe once uh, every week, let it be so. If you take an example of Jackson Biko, the example I used, he says that he writes on a daily basis and he has the time when he starts. So he says from seven, he starts writing from seven, sat in his desk. And on Sunday, he writes the articles that he posts in the blog. On Tuesday, he writes the articles for the newspaper. Uh, on Wednesday, he writes an article for a magazine. So he has put it in a way that he knows what he's doing at what time. So even for us writers, a place to start would be to put rhythm to your writing because that will give you some, uh, that will give you direction of what you are doing, uh, how, how well you are doing. So you may be able to consider that as well. Then we can be able to take four and five, then we can close the session. Uh, anyone would wish to read number four? Let me read. Uh, this is Lydia yes. Kimani. Uh, set a, time, yes. a specific time to... Oh, no, sorry, that's five. Five? Four. Four, eh? Yeah, four, four yes. Yeah. Writing mm. only when you feel like, like it is very romantic, but unfortunately very unprofessional, impractical, and unproductive. 
professional writing demands that you respect it. Do you only go to work when you feel like it? Set a, a specific time to write and actually write. Keep your word. Make it very definite. I will write from 6 a.m. to 7.30 a.m. every day. Have a notebook where you jot down story ideas you randomly think about. And when you sit down, pick what to write and write. If you want to work on, work on a novel, for instance, do it, do it within the specific time set up. Stop the romance of feelings. They always lie to us, and you know this is better. You know this better than we do. <laughs> Actually, Lydia, now that you read that mm -hmm. and passed through the class where this was emphasized so much, I would mm -hmm. ask you to expound mm -hmm. on this. Wow. Well, uh, being a writer is not just about romanticizing the idea of writing. You know, it's a good thing to feel that you are going to be a writer. But if you don't have the habits and the daily routine to support it, it will just be all talk and no work, you know. Yeah, it is possible. Most, I mean, and I think it's a challenge for most of us. I particularly, maybe for that reason. But uh, you need to keep to time and make sure that you do it. That's the only way you'll be able to actually have a sense of achievement and move on and actually see what you have been able to achieve. Yeah. Thank you very much. That is well explained and well, well done, Lydia. So people were challenged. Like even me, I've not developed a rhythm that I would wish to, a rhythm that I'm proud of. Many of us, but it's a good challenge to take. It's a good place to start our writing so that we, we professionalize it like work. And you know, you are familiar, most of you are very familiar with work environment. Whether you feel like it, you yes. still have to go. Whether you don't feel like it, you still have to go. Yes, I have to go. I have to go. I have last year. Okay. Uh, so we can take five. Uh, maybe someone can read. Read like all depends on it. Anyone would wish to take it? Uh, pick it from here. You have not uh, projected it. I have. I have. The greatest weapon for a writer is reading. You are projecting number six. So you no, that's uh... fine. Sorry. Okay. Just, just the line be above it. Just the line above okay. it. The two lines. Yeah. O okay. This is Otto Sipuna. Yes. The the greatest weapon for a writer is reading. Yeah. If you want to write one book, ensure you read uh, ten books of the same genre or topic before you start. Read both uh, related and unrelated literature. If you are writing, uh, if you are writing is uh, uh, your justice, then reading is your justice system. Read more to write more. Hmm. Thank you very much. I don't know if any one of you feels inspired to expound on this. Tobias and anyone eh, would wish to link reading and writing. Anyone? I, I think before the anyone comes in, yes, I can uh, in in summary way use a technological explanation: garbage okay. in, garbage out. Yeah. So if you are not reading or you are reading lo wrong literature, then whatever yeah. you're also producing is is not right. If you are reading yeah. right, whatever that you are reading, because you are also shaped by the experiences of other readers who have come before you. Yeah. Then wh whatever that you produce is even finer a uh, product than uh, wh wh what you interacted with. Mm. So reading is fodder for uh, for for best writing. Ah, perfect, perfect. Well put, well put, Sifuna. Thank you very much for that. So reading it can't be emphasized any further. I think so. Uh, there is this uh, this idea of reading ten before you write one. Ten is just a number to tell you that you need more reading than actually writing. And you, you notice it, maybe Hillary can be able to tell us this, but I don't know if you see a trend that uh, until the last generation, eh, uh, the, the people who were born in 1980s and 90s, most of the, the best performing children or the people who liked reading were children of teachers. Why? Or the people who could write very well, who could present themselves very well, partly because they had shoes like Hillary, but 
well, they could also present themselves well. Probably this research is far-fetched, but I think it's some, it relates to reading somehow. When you read, you even write better, you even speak better, you, you have more experiences. You, maybe you've traveled to different countries and you've actually not traveled, but gone there, experienced and lived with them. So when you sit down to write, you will not be consumed by your own stereotypes, you will not be consumed by your own thoughts and feelings, but you will be relating things to even gener um, broader, uh, broader perspective of, uh, of what you've experienced. So reading gives us that chance. So we also encourage that you should read related and unrelated literature. Why related? Because you will be able to see how other people do it, how, what you are trying to write, how have other people written it, and what makes their work attractive or not. Then unrelated literature. We think that some things may look unrelated, but they are surely related. That's maybe even picking from uh, what Otto has just mentioned that. Let me use a technological explanation to this. Garbage in, garbage out. That is a very common thing in computer science and all these uh, computer studies. But mm -hmm. again, it relates to what we are discussing now. So we encourage you to read as much as possible. Guideline being, if you are to write one book, read 10. If you are to write one blog post, read 10. But that is just a number and a guideline to you. Uh, I think we may not take all of them, but uh, we can be able to, because I'm going to share this link. This is an article posted in the Writers Guild website. I'm going to share this link in the chat, so we'll just be able to, to, to pick the last, the last one. Then we can be able to hand over to the next session. So anyone would wish to read the uh, number six? Hello. Hello. Yes, yes. Okay, please. let me read. Number six, an yes. accountability partner will help. Get someone to write and work with, perhaps your mentor, or just someone who can keep you accountable. We are weaker than we can admit. We all need someone to encourage us. Get such a person from those writers you admire. You could also join clubs or writing organizations like Writers Guild Kenya, where there are systems of accountability and growth as you help another person in their writing journey also right. Mm. Uh, thank, you. thank you very much for that. Uh, regarding the accountability partner, uh, again, this is something that we need to emphasize for writing. Most people have complained that, uh, you know, maybe established writers are unreachable, they don't, they can't mentor, they don't, they are not um, enthusiastic in mentoring upcoming writers. But we encourage you to not look far away. You realize that some people, um, maybe even people who have become presidents, they have gotten mentorship from people who are presidents. And uh, example of Moi and Uhuru will do here, where uh, you get someone to just help you through the journey. But more than a mentor, someone who is an accountability partner. I really admire some, some, some things which I see. Like Vera um, is very close to one of our writers called Munira. So every time Vera writes, she sends to Munira. Munira looks at it and gets back. Then Munira does the same. She writes, sends to Vera, and Vera gets back. So you realize that even before you, <coughs> even before you go out there or before you share your article out there, someone has looked at it. If you looked at if you look at history, you will realize that great oh, yeah. people are mentored by others. So writers also need a mentor or an accountability partner. Someone who just will just ask you. From here, up here, we had said that you set a specific time if you were to write on Monday. So someone will just ask you, what did you write on Monday? Because you are to write on Monday. So what did you write on Monday? Would you mind sharing it with me? Or someone will just ask you for a link or the you committed that you'll be writing for two months. Have you, uh, what have you written? Yeah. So just someone will be able to ask you because we are sometimes weaker than we think 
we we will we'll rationalize we'll say i'll write tomorrow you are to write today but i'll write tomorrow but if someone was to ask you at least you would feel responsibility to someone else so that is also something that we encourage to try as you start out in your writing so i encourage you to read number seven number eight uh, number nine to just finish uh, reading this i'll be able to share the link to this um uh, this article in the chat so that you can be able to follow through. So that is the end of uh, my not so brief presentation, though I promise that it would be brief. I am sorry for extending, taking more than I asked for. But just to remind you is start from writing itself. Do not talk about writing. Uh, we encourage you to take writing courses and writing um, tutorials, but start from writing itself then uh, you may evaluate the reason for your why because it will strengthen you or give you energy. Then um, uh, here is better than there. The experience that you're familiar with, something that you know for sure is better than something that you, you'd want to explore or something you'd want to research on. Then, you know, write on a daily basis or put some consistency to it. Then set a specific time to write and this we explained as well, and read, uh, like writing depends on it, because writing actually depends on it. Then get an accountability partner to help you through the journey. So thank you very much for listening to the brief presentation on the same. I hope maybe you pick one or two points to help you in your writing journey. So maybe we can, now I will stop sharing my screen. So, uh, Maybe if you have a question or an input, you, maybe one of those points uh, relates to you, or if you have any input, maybe you can be able to share, then we give Deck a chance to pick from there. Anyone who has? Um, yes, yes. Yes, I do. Yes, uh, Priscilla, proceed. Thank you very much. I'm wondering, there's a point there, here yeah. or there? Yeah? Yes. And then there's yes. also another one of uh, read many books. And uh, I am wondering how they come together because you have just said that uh, if you have to write, then you can write about your surroundings from yeah. home. You can write from home. Eh? Yeah. And, and then when it comes to writing professional or professionalism, you have to read many books. Yeah. Is it because yeah. that there are two categories of the audience or how is it going? Because I remember when I did my, there's a, some write-up I did yeah. about daycare. Yeah. Yeah. And when I did that, I did it so well yeah. because I had a small baby yeah. and uh, the challenges I was facing is what I put down. Yes. And yeah. I put it down without reading any other literature. Yeah. But then when I came to doing uh, stress management, yeah. I had to read very many books before I started. And even when I was doing it, I was still reading very many books. So mm. the difference is, uh, is it one is academic, one is uh, leisure, or I'm not understanding? Mm. Okay. Thank you very much for that, Priscilla. Uh, anyone who would wish to respond to her on the same? Uh, if you got the question that she asked, Anyone who feels inspired? Can you summarize the question? Sorry, I, I was not all here. Oh, sorry. I think if I got it right, because uh, Priscilla was breaking at some point, but if I got it right, she was, she's asking, she says that there was a time she wrote about a young baby, a, a small baby when she had a baby. So she was writing about the troubles she was undergoing. So it was very well. But when she's doing professional writing, then she has to go and read, uh, mm -hmm read other literature uh, on the same. So I think she asked, uh, is it exclusive that maybe reading uh, is for leisure or to build your writing? I don't know if, Priscilla, that is what you asked. Yeah, uh, what I'm asking is, uh, what is yeah. the difference? Because one, it's so easy yeah. to do. Yeah. But when you're doing academics, it's so difficult because you have to go through many books. 
Mm. So is it the same with a story? Like if I'm to write a book, do I have yeah. to read many books? Okay. Mm. I, I just respond uh, from my experience um, for writing for academics, you are forced to, to, if it's not a topic that you're passionate about, you're, you're forced to write, to read everything so that you can inform your writing. So that one, there's no choice. Uh, at the same time, my experience, uh, Hello, uh, uh, may I reading? chip in? Sorry. Somebody. Reading for Asia is, is, is why we, we like to read. So it, it also uh, supports your writing. I ha I'm writing right now, I, I'm interested in the topic of bullying, but I was not interested enough to read some of the, the books that have been written. I just didn't like them. But somehow I had to read them so that I could get the context, so that I could get the culture appropriately, so that I could be in that writing you know, um, uh, environment, that topic. So it's interesting that I, I, I enjoy the topic. I can write it you know, in a blog and I, I'm going to be writing articles. But then in order to write, because the, the, the style of writing that I use is, um, is diary, writing like a diary. Mm -hmm. I know how to write diaries, but I want to write it so that it meets the, the standard of what is considered mm -hmm. a diary. So I've been reading for diaries, some of them are interesting, but honestly, some of them are for fourth grade, fifth grade. They, they, they are huge in their, in, uh, with kids, but I, it just bores me, but I had to. So you, you'll find there's a fine line where you, you're interested in the topic, you want to write uh, fiction, but you don't know how to, to do certain things. So or you do, you're not sure how to, make, to, uh, to create your, your characters. So you might have to read things once more. It's a mixed bag, as long as you know what kind of do something that you're not going to do in writing, you know, about your story. But at the same time, since you enjoy writing your story, everything you write will help you write your story. So I don't know where you get it. It's, it's almost like a mixed bag. It's yes and no. There's no, uh, there's no, uh, there's no, it, you can't be sure that you're going to be interested in everything you're reading. But if somebody tells you, go out there and read this book, he's a good writer. I'm telling you what I found is sometimes people say somebody's a good writer. They're a good writer, but I'm not interested. The story just doesn't get to me. But I'm going to read it because I'm looking at their style. I'm looking at some of the, the things that they have done in the story that will help my story. So you see, in that case, okay. I'm not reading for nature. It's, uh, yeah, sort of. Okay, thank you very much for that. <laughs> thank you very much. So sometimes you, you read because you have to. Maybe if you are doing the professional writing, then you have to pick a specific style or you have to specify to pick a specific information that you need, so you, you, you are forced to. I think if I got it right, then uh, maybe that is what you meant. Kevin? 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 Uh -huh. Do you have something to, to add on the same? Okay. Any, any other person? Yes, please. Please, please go ahead, sir. Okay. Uh, I have realized with time, eh? yeah. I don't know if anybody else has gone through this, that sometimes you read a very uh, well, I... piece of like... Uh. I wanted to switch off. Yeah. Yes, proceed, yeah. I realized that sometimes I write after reading a very beautiful piece, like you read that, you're like, wow, this guy really put so much into this stuff. Yeah. That I want to, I want to just do something that can also, you know, touch a life or change someone's out beyond. Basically, reading someone else can give you inspiration. So maybe yeah. what Gabriel forgot to say was don't just read anything, you should read good literature. Because mm -hmm. there are pieces you read that. Like hey, this guy, what was he even trying to say? So yeah. even the best writer would read such a thing, and you know you feel demotivated. Okay. 
Yeah, so I believe sometimes you just read for the inspiration. Like, you read and that thread just touches a chord in you that would not have been there if you didn't actually read that piece. Mm, perfect. I pick it. Don't read anything. Just read good literature, things which will be able to inspire you to write well. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Okay. I think we've, we've given justice to, to the question. Priscilla, some of this, uh, you know, we keep at it. We keep at it. So maybe with more exchange of thoughts, we'll be able to, to, to you know, to get to it better. So any, any other person with any reaction? I'll ask Beth, maybe because she's requested that she'll be leaving shortly. Uh, before she leaves, I'll ask you to give us your closing remarks, so to speak. But any other person who has any input regarding the presentation that we had before we proceed to the next one, briefly? Okay. Uh, hello. Uh, hello. Hello. Yes. 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 yes please. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You're getting me. Yes. 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 Yeah. Uh, I grasped um, uh, one point uh, during presentation, and yeah. uh, that has really, has really, uh, it's like a mind uh, or or eye opener to me. Mm. Uh, I don't know the exact number, but it was here is better than there. Yeah. And uh, basically, I am biased towards uh, African writer series. I don't yeah. know why, <laughs> but uh, whenever I interact with, uh, especially the so-called the legendary African writers, and I'm talking about uh, the fathers in this field, uh, Chinua Achebe, Wole Shoinka, Chimamanda, and and yeah. um, and and th that uh, uh, generation of writing, uh, I, I I tend to. Uh, to, 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 to really agree with that point, that when you write, you must write within what makes what we call contemporary relevance. I cannot be here in Nairobi. I have grown in the African setting. You know my socialization is within the African setting. And therefore, if you are writing within this particular area and parameter, you must be cognizant of the fact that Otoa Sifuna will be reading uh, books that makes uh, a lot of uh, relevance and sense to him. Mm. I'm not going to pick uh, 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 to pick uh, uh, some experiences uh, on uh, uh, 14 Downing Street in the UK and uh, fail to realize what is happening in uh, River Road, uh, Nairobi. Yeah. Mm. So that point uh, to me made a lot of sense that if you want to embark on writing, kindly understand your terrain who is going to be my consumer and, mm. and you realize that um, some of us who have had uh, to write and uh, were frustrated uh, is because we we actually write for the aliens eh? and okay. even, uh, right now even if they say that the world is a global village hello <laughs> yes 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 please proceed <laughs> yeah even if we, we we don't want to run, run away from the reality that with technology, civilization, the world is a global village, but the experiences that shape us, eh, especially yeah. as Africans, are much better when you capitalize on them than when you write for uh, maybe the European or any other market. Perfect. Thank you very much. Well said. Eh? <laughs> so we should not write for aliens. Eh? We should write for people we know. No, you don't, you, you don't write for the aliens. And when you write for this particular group, also try to, 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 to motivate their ego. You, you have read uh, V.S. Naipaul mm. and how he was so sarcastic and so negative with the African and the Caribbean. Okay, okay. <laughs> so you're not going to attack me, yet I know that this is what I, re I relate to. Madame in the, in the, in the U.S., I, I, I think you might have a, a bone to pick with me here, but I'm just juxtaposing, juxtaposing this. If I have to write uh, we, in Kenya here, and I want this book to be sold, and I've gone through the hassle, will I write the, the, the experiences of Chicago, or I will write the experiences of uh, 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 River Road uh, here in Nairobi? <laughs> uh, OK. So uh, Beth, maybe you can also take that chance to share your closing remarks. You asked whether we will record the session. Yes, we will do. And I hope we'll okay. be able to send it to you so that you can have the next presentation. Okay, thank you. Well, I, I don't know whether I want to pick a bone with you, but um, 
it's you're just saying the same thing that Gabriel presented. You write in your context. Mm. So if your context is you want to write about your experience living in Chicago, that book is not is going to be read by everyone because the Chicagoans are going to read it. Kenyans are going to read it because you're a Kenyan. And that's a context that you're used to. Mm. If you're writing for your village, that's a context you're used to. So you can't say that you can't write for those people. You can write uh, for Americans your experience in Chicago because as a minority, they want to know your experience here. And that's a book that also Kenyans will read because Kenyans might be interested in your life as a person living in Chicago. So in, in, there's nothing wrong with that, but just write what you know. I write, mm -hmm. I write my, my books and my intention is going to be dual. I write books that maybe um, that there's some cultural context in America, but like I, I was saying, any child, so the, topics, the topic is what will inform who will read it and, and, and maybe my market. My market may not be predominantly in Kenya because of access. But those kids who, uh, who can access those books will read them. For example, now you have to remember that children's contexts have changed with the cell phone, with the TV and everything. There's, there are many children who go to school where they are reading American books or European books. And that's their culture in their home, not in, like, in Kenya. But their culture is they are very, very affluent in how they exchange their culture. There are some kids who take holidays in South Africa. So they've seen all those contexts. So when they read, for example, a book that is, uh, I think, quite popular with a lot of kids is Diary of a, of a Wimpy Kid. Some of you have had and you've seen kids read Why are they reading it? And it has no, the, the boy lives in America because being wimpy, being scared, being a, a middle age child, age maybe nine to 12, all the things that that kid is thinking will make sense to them, even if they don't live there. Therefore, it, it, you have to be careful. Don't get outside your comfort zone and try to market your book somewhere. That is true. But it's not, it doesn't apply to all writers. The, my first book is based in, in Karachiwonyo, where I grew up. You read it and you see everything. You'll see your village in, in your mind's eye. When Americans read it and they love it, they see my culture. They start to understand me. And the way I've written it is so detailed that you can be an American born, raised, and never moved anywhere, but you can see the picture. So that goes to the quality of writing that will, will mean that you can market your book outside. Do you have to write to market it to other cultures? No. But if that's what you decide, then you better write in a way that that culture will read it. So I'm, I'm saying that it's okay. If your focus is for your writing for your culture, that's what you want to write, and you're, that's relevant to you, well, that's well and good. Chinua Achebe is read by everyone in the world, but he didn't write for Americans, he didn't write for Europeans, he didn't write for anybody. He sincerely wrote what he understood, exposed his culture, detailed it, clear literature, and everybody loves it. It's a classic everywhere. So we can't, um, I'm not saying that we want to start doing what Chinua Achebe did, but I'm saying if you write sincerely, mm -hmm. well, in your culture, in your context, what you know, you're go a, a European is going to read about your village and that book can become a classic because of the style, because of mm -hmm. the climate, because of everything you've written. So I, I personally, I don't want to stop myself thinking, oh, because I'm African, I was raised in Kenya, I have to write as a Kenyan. And no, I am writing for the world. My book should be, a Chinese should be able to read that book. Not because I, I'm addressing anything Chinese, but because I'm writing a human experience a child's experience that any child can relate to and bring it to their context. So, so that's, that's where I'm, I'm coming from. If I say that you can write anyway, I think that we should write what we understand, what we feel, what we know. If you don't know that, that uh, culture or that context, don't write. Recently, I just, actually the reason why I have not had a book in an, a year and over is because I, I wrote a whole book finished it, gave it to my agent, and it just didn't taste good. It, he, did, he didn't like it. And I tried and tried, and I, I put a lot of money into it, and then I gave it up. So it's sitting there, over 60, over 50,000 words, and I, 
if I'm to, to publish it, I have to revamp it completely. What was the problem? I don't know. But he, he's comparing my first book and my second book and he's saying, no, it's not reached the standard that he'd like. I'm not ready to go back and work on that book. But, but something went wrong in the way I was putting it and I, I think I have an idea. So you see, as a writer, things are gonna go bad, good and bad, but then stay true to yourself. What is it that you want to write? I want to write diverse books. I want to write books that all kids can read. I want to write diverse, I'm, I'm going to write about my village. I'm going to write about a kid in the village in Kenya. But I tell you that an American is gonna read it and they'll love it because I'm sincerely sharing my culture. I'm writing well. I'm, I'm, I have to edit it to the point where somebody reads it and they, there's no problem. It's well written. So I think that I think that's how that's what I, I can summarize and finish with. Write true, be true to yourself, like uh, uh, Gabriel said. Be true to yourself. Write what you know, and 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 expect that it should be a book that everyone can read, and mm. you do not go wrong. Thank you very much. Well Thank said. You know, everybody and will you'll connect. Thank you very much. Uh, if, if anyone would wish to connect with you and you've not managed to connect during this time, I can be able to share the contacts later. Yeah, I left my website there, my Facebook contact, so I think you sh they should be able to get a hold of me. Perfect. Thank you very much. And see you next week. I hope you will be there during next week's Ecclesia as well. Oh, okay. If I see it, you, you text me uh, on WhatsApp. Yeah. I don't know I whether... Will. Yeah, okay. Cool. I will. I will. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And with that, uh, we end the first session. I'm really sorry, Deca, we've taken more than we asked for in terms of time, but I hand it over to you and ask you, uh, you know, dear writers, that you don't go away. <laughs> we are almost finishing. So, Deca, you may pick from there. Uh, thank you, Gabriel. You know that song? <laughs> <laughs> Bruno Mars, the lazy song, and it's, it's, it's the title of my presentation uh, today, that is Lazy is Good. Eh? And I'm um, not presenting that so as to uh, corrupt your mind or something, but if at all, I would introduce a new perspective to what you've been told before. If I'll share my screen, you will just let me know if you can see what's already there. Uh -huh. uh, let me see. Do you see that? Ah. Uh. I'm not able to see. I don't know if uh, do you see. Know. Okay, it was already there. So let me let me put this on uh, full screen mode. So is that visible on full screen mode? Mm -hmm. If anyone else can, you can just respond. Uh, I'm not seeing it. <laughs> not yet. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, not let yet. Me, let me change the settings again. Entire screen share. Oh, 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 so Chrome would like to share. So, how do I do this? Aha, yes. Okay. So, you can see that, right? Oh. Perfect. Here we are. <laughs> this is good. Do, don't do anything. Yes. <laughs> Please, yes, lazy is good and don't do anything at all. Um, so this is, if you've seen this photo going around on social media, uh, let me just add those whose microphones are on, you can actually just mute and then when you want to share something, you'll put on. So when, when, when you see what's on your screen, it's a photo that was taken by a photographer uh, in Westlands and then he said he could see Mount Kenya and that's what you see at the background there. And some of us disputed it. And after that, there was a series of memes. Eh? After that, you, if you remember this one, uh, people will say that now because the environment is clean, the air is clean, we can see pyramids in Cairo from Nairobi. Uh, that was funny, of course. Some people said they can even see uh, White House from Mount Kenya. <laughs> Others will see the Statue of Liberty. Um, this is the Buljarab, among others, uh, very iconic features in the world. But the one that is on your screen now is a true one, yeah? So this is uh, in India's uh, Punjab city. We all know Punjab for some funny reasons, if you remember Governor Waititu, where he did his degree. So this is Punjab, but then behind Punjab, you see the Himalayas. Himalayas, 
uh, is one of the is the biggest mountain range, and it has one of the world's highest peaks, including Mount Everest. And this is true because within just the first week of of lockdown in India, air pollution dropped down by forty percent. Eh? And you can imagine if that's just first week. So how about four weeks, which is a month? How about if it goes even for a year? And you know, India is one of the highest countries with the highest levels of pollution. Yeah. So if pollution reduced by 44% and there was this amount of visibility. So I want to take this scenario and put it in our case, eh? just see how it would work in real life. Um, normally, especially now we are being told because we are on a lockdown, please, Take, take charge, yeah? do a lot of things during this lockdown. Make sure you read a book or two or three or four or a book every week, or make sure you do a course online, uh, make sure you do some online writing, uh, make sure you do some other things. And, and there's also the mainstream media that is competing with our attention. Uh, people also want to watch Money Haste, people want to watch Prison Break, Maria, I'm a fan, yeah? <laughs> um, among other things, yeah? But then what we don't realize is some of these things have been put intentionally to compete for attention and distract us. I'll take the case of a phone. And as you can see on your screen at the bottom right there, the black box, on an average day, on an average day, not when you are free, just on an average day, you check your phone about 58 times. Eh? So when you check your phone 58 times, it means you click it or you swipe, yeah, or you just touch it about 2,617 times. It can even go high up to 4,300 times for people who are avid users. And I know at this stage, that's who we are, yeah? And so it means on an average day again, about three hours or three and a quarter hours of your time is spent on this gadget. So we are literally prisoners of this. What does this mean? This means that we don't have a chance to think ourselves, yeah? Uh, I'll stay on this slide. There's a a conference, not conference per se, but a forum I attended with Dr. Bitang and Demo, and he asked us to stop thinking and start doing, and I challenged him that, how about we start thinking itself, because we are not doing it. The mere fact that we are doing lots of things, we, our life is full of routine. Wake up, go to work, come back, cook, sit on your laptop, send an email, do some analysis on a calculator, cook again, eat, you never have that moment where you just sit, and, sit down and then relax and ease the pollution that is in your head. The same way this lockdown is easing pollution in the air is the same way it could ease the pollution that is in our heads and give us a chance to just breathe out and, 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 and relax. And then when that happens, then it means you have a chance to re release these mental toxins in your brain, refresh your thinking, boost your creativity, boost your mood, energize. And that's why I say during this period that we stay at home, it's not necessary that we have to achieve all these things because then life or happiness itself is not about all these accomplishments. Even just sitting down and not doing anything per se and, and just letting the moment pass is even better like that. Uh, somebody introduced the concept of the olden philosophers and even the greatest thinkers, those who invented a lot of things, the light bulb, uh, Newton's theory um, um, uh, of, of motion, uh, I mean Newton's law of motion, among other things, eh? uh, things such as gravity. They were all invented when the person was just sitting and not doing anything else. And for us writers ourselves, uh, I feel that by just sitting down and having those moments where you don't have to clog your head with a lot of things, it's one of the recipes for boosting creativity. So that next time we don't always complain about mental block or writer's block that you can't proceed, you can't be creative enough. It's because you've not given your, yourself and your brain a chance to think and to be creative. You're already distracted by so many things. Eh? And that also introduces the concept of attention, disability, disorder. So technology is sucking our lives little by little. And so is the same as being busy. In my ideal world, especially at this lockdown, I would wish that we transform from the image that is on the left to the image on the right. And stop doing so many things and just do nothing for a day, for two days, for three days, and see what benefit it will have to your brain and to your mental health as a person, to your mood and to your energy. Uh, thank you, Gabriel. That will be my presentation <laughs> thank you very much deka eh? you know thank you uh, <laughs> deka wrote an article on this and uh, 
he went against what everyone else is saying. It is during this time that people want to do what they've never done. Uh, people yeah. want to accomplish, they want to learn piano, uh, guitar. People want to come out, um, people want to come out of this period when they have things. And that is the exact opposite of what Deca was saying here. And I don't know what you'd think of the same. I'm actually, uh, I don't know if I can, uh, maybe I can look for it later on and share, but there is this, uh, I think the person who invented gravity uh, got to invent it when he was just seated down and, and, and relaxing. So I think that is what Deca is advocating for, that we, the world is on lockdown, so so should we. <laughs> we should also be on lockdown, more like. Our mind should be on lockdown and we see what we can achieve. If we can see Mount Kenya from here, maybe even if that Mount Kenya can come in form of our writing. And, and that's what I forgot to mention, Dinda, yeah? Sorry for interrupting you. But how ahead. many times? How many times in a year, in a century, in a decade, does the world come to a standstill like now? These are once in a lifetime opportunity that we have, yeah? So if the world is taking a break, we too should take a break. <laughs> eh? Well said. I don't know what you'd say. Any reactions on the same? <laughs> then we close. Any reactions on Decker's presentation? Yeah, hello. Yes, uh, Gab Gabriel. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, it's fun. And so uh, maybe you can react. Yeah. Uh, I, I think um, what he's saying is, uh, what Decker is saying is uh, making sense. Yeah. Uh, especially when you look at it from the point of view of writers. Yeah. That this is a period where just by observing, yeah, you can be able to take so many notes on what is happening. Yeah. In, including the stories of people um uh, trying to even travel elsewhere using ambulances, others using um, caskets to fake that they're going to bury their loved ones so that they can um, cross over to the other counties. All those stories, yeah. once you once you sit down and um, and 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 put them, uh, you know, uh, just observe, do nothing, uh, yeah. note them down. At the end of this period, I think even as a writer, it is possible to to also come up with uh, a lot of content. Mm. And I think, yeah, and I think it's also a moment of uh, self reflection, just yeah. by sitting and observing. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank yeah. you. So it, the period also gives us a chance, and it gives us content as writers. Eh? If we observe and if we see how things are happening, what is happening around us. Okay. Thank you. Any other person with any other reaction on the same? Uh, Priscilla, are you? What what would you what would you suggest? Do you think this is time we should come up with uh, we should accomplish Hello? things or what would you Hello? say? Yes, Ian. Hello. Yeah, I just like to collaborate uh, Decker's uh, idea such that uh, when you're lazy you tend to come up with fresh ideas. You tend to digest what you've taken in. Like uh, in a day, uh, for an average human being or an average youth in Kenya, we tend to take in more than we give out, be it information, be it uh, things, so that when you take your own time, when you take like an hour or 30 minutes to just sit still and observe or just don't think, you're just there seated still, not sleeping at all. Mm may tend to come up with new ideas. The same applies to, I think, uh, if I'm not wrong, uh, some of us, when you go to sleep in, in, in the night, yeah. you may find that you usually spend 10 to 15 minutes thinking of how you may change your life, of new ideas, of uh, new stories you need to write, of brilliant ideas of stories that you need to write. And then that moment lapses and you sleep. It's mm -hmm. just a moment of uh, coming up with the ideas where you are doing nothing. You are focused on sleeping and at the same time your mind is now digesting each and everything that has happened during the day. Meaning yeah. you are coming up with new things, you are coming up with new ideas. Mm. Yeah, while you are at rest. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Ian. Eh? I'm happy you, you look at it from that point of view as well. This is really encouraged by philosophers as well because most philosophers have come up with theories 
when they were just sleeping or when they were just resting. In fact, I'll tell you a story of one towards the end after you shared your reactions on this. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Yes, 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 yes. Otoa, please go ahead. <laughs> yeah. I, I think I've also been, uh, <laughs> I have been activated by Decker's uh, revelation. Huh? Yes. You know, sometimes when I, when I'm marking my students' uh, uh, essays, uh, compositions, especially the creative ones, yes, they normally start, and and you will agree with me that this is um, the realization that you you will also uh, tend to agree that it's a trend. They yeah. always start with uh, waking up. I woke up, and having taken <laughs> breakfast or uh, or what? So it means that writing as actually begins from a certain point of uh, of, of of going into a lull. Yeah. And, and, uh, and and you can see it's also biblical. Yeah? Sit yeah. still and uh, realize or know that I am your God. So mm. for me as a, as, as, a, as a linguist, as a, as a creative um, a writer out of this, yeah. I can capture from uh, Decker's uh, presentation that actually every cloud has its own uh, silver lining. Mm. Yes, uh, we, we could be uh, crying and saying COVID-19 has uh, relegated us to the periphery of loneliness. But this is the, crea uh, the, the greatest moment. Yeah. You realize, uh, you realize that uh, some writers actually wrote in the, in the prison walls mm. and they used the tissue paper and all that. The prison provided that, uh, that uh, serenity for them to write. So when people are confined within uh, their rooms, and they are not getting out. Why not, as writers, actually try to capitalize on this? Because this is a time in which a lot is happening in our thought processes, and out of which can come uh, very good uh, creative uh, uh, um, uh, revelations. Perfect. Perfect. Well put, sir. Well put. Thank you very much. I'll be very conscious next time when I'm writing, not to start from when I woke up. Maybe I'll stay. I went to sleep. <laughs> Uh, no, you, you you need to tell you need to tell our our students. You know, I I, I mark Kenya National Examination Council uh, 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 papers. Yes, and you you will actually realize that three quarters of our students, our candidates, when they are writing imaginative composition, yeah, they start by waking up. Their stories must start by them waking up. Mm and most likely taking tea prepared by their mother. <laughs> that is where the story begins. Okay. And sometimes feel it is very monotonous for our, our students to torture us. And, and you see, when you are marking, these are the exam centers. It's like a mental anguish. So <laughs> you pick each and every script. I woke up. I did this. No. The story cannot be starting every time. There is nothing cast on the stone that says that the story must start when you wake up. <laughs> Thank you, bro. Well put, eh? <laughs> Story you. should start when you go to sleep. Hmm? I think Deck has gotten a campaign manager here to help with the uh, idea. <laughs> okay. Anyway, I just need to know his rights, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry? Okay. Any any other last reactions on this? Then we can be able to finish. Anyone? Hello, Gabriel. Yes, yes. Okay. I think I also agree with uh, Mr. Decker. Yeah. I think naturally, in the process of life, there is uh, that moment of rest always uh, brings that uh, moment, that uh, refreshing, that refreshment, right? Mm -hmm. I think it is in this period that we've seen creativity at its highest peak. Kenyans going up on Twitter and and, and trolling even their leaders. And yesterday, Bharti yeah. was trending, and there were very funny comments on on that section. Do you mm. realize this, during this moment that uh, we uh, say, uh, I'd say lazy or we yeah. we we are we are in resting mode? Yeah. During this yeah. moment that actually we get to creativity enhances mm. natural naturally uh, natural uh, aspects and the the, the 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 creative aspect of life they they, they tend to uh, to maximize the utility yeah. uh, during, the, during the moment of rest. That's my contribution.
<laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Okungu. Um, okay, okay, I see. Deka, you are getting more people to join you. Eh? <laughs> it's great to, to, to know that we share the same thought. It's really appreciated. I think, I think Deka, there is a question from Lydia for you. Or uh, is the story starting from sleeping as a result of drilling, which translates to lack of creativity? Maybe we need to have writing workshops in schools. Uh, I think that is for Sifuna. I'll give you a chance towards the end, after we've finished everything, to respond to that, whether it is as a result of drilling, or maybe we need to tell our students to be more creative. So now, uh, is there anyone with any reaction before we close? We don't need to lock anyone out. Uh, there being no, no, uh, there being no one who'd wish to make a contribution, I would wish to thank you all. Thank you very much for uh, turning up to make this discussion lively, and hopefully, you've picked something that is going to build on your writing. So, uh, I don't know. Maybe we can just do last round where I ask everyone, everyone who is here still. We are thirteen to share what they've picked or what they've learned from this session. Either you've learned it from someone's introduction or what they were saying, or you've learned it from my presentation, or you've learned it from Decker's presentation, or just a thought that has come to your mind when we were having this conversation. So if you'd allow me to ask all of us to share maybe what they've learned during this session, and also uh, if you have any information you'd wish to share with the rest, maybe it is a link you'd want, a recommendation of an article you'd want them to read, or anything you'd wish to communicate to others, an announcement, you may be able to make it at this point, and your closing remarks. So I would ask, ask all of us to consider that. So if just for order, and uh, I would just ask to maybe call from, let's start from Okungu Elishama. <laughs> Hello. Yes, yes, now we are we can hear you. All right. Thank you very much. Um glad uh, my first uh, if my first meeting with you guys has been this resourceful. Yeah. And out of learned a lot of things actually. I've been challenged a lot, especially from the point uh, from uh Dinda's uh presentations, the purpose for writing. And then uh, here is better than there, and writing daily, and and uh, start uh, writing. Uh, talk, uh, it was uh, don't talk about writing. Start writing. Mm. That was quite mm. a, quite a challenge. Then out of Decker's uh, the presentation, it was quite a thought provoking that I had to think about the natural cycle of life, and uh, of this. All presentation. I thought I was the aunt in, in, in I was I was I was the the, the, the hair in the in an elephant's game. <laughs> but, <laughs> I, I I also got I also had a view to uh, put to it that uh, I've always been on the background and watching things and reading stuff. I've never really had time to interact with the with the with the, with the writers. So. I, I had uh, uh, I had the thought that it is in the books where the ink, where the pen and the eyes meet. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much. I hope to uh, join you join the group again during the uh, discussion or during the meeting. And uh, to everyone, I hope. Let me wish that. Your, you you share your uh, your articles and uh, your works that I could uh, try to read them during this uh, uh, moment. And advice, piece of advice to you: stay safe, stay home, and wear the mask like the lady, <laughs> like the lady did. <laughs> and don't touch your face. <laughs> uh, nice thing. Man. Thank you very much, uh, Elishama, and all the best in your writing. Uh, I think you had shared the link to your, uh, you had shared the link to your where we can get your work. 
Uh, yeah, so even if I hope you also, yeah. Yeah, there was a question I posted on the chat spot. I don't know if you noticed. Uh, it's about the difference between diary and the writing. Uh, the writing, yeah. Oh, okay. Keeping a diary and writing, eh? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So um, maybe mm, let me just note it. So if anyone has uh, a reaction to it, you can be able to to share as we finish. But I'll also be able just to share a word on it after we finished. Yeah. So yeah. Thank you very much, Elisha. And see you next week. We hope to have another session next week. We'll let you know in advance. And uh, many other things that we do, which we believe can benefit you. Uh, so, uh, Eugene Lomosi, you may give us your closing remarks. <laughs> oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. By the way, to start, I will want to appreciate uh, Writers Guild Kenya for organizing this session. I was just uh, sampling across the internet. I, I mean, uh, looking at the internet for maybe book clubs and writing clubs. And then I came across Writers Guild Kenya. I, I, I like the page on Facebook. Then I, I came upon uh, this uh, session and I saw a post. So I, I clicked the link and I was very excited that there is such a session during such time when maybe we don't have so much to do. At least mm -hmm. there's something that I could gain. So for me, the lessons is that uh, I could share is that uh, basically writing and reading makes us better. And mostly leaders are writers and they are also readers. To be a leader, you also have to either write or read. But, there's, uh, there's a connection on the same. And then another thing is that uh, uh, the outcome of our lives actually is dependent upon our levels of communication. Mm. So you find that uh, by reading and writing, you become a better communicator and you're able to connect with many people in various contexts. So it becomes easy for you to do your things and manage life. So that is it for me. Oh, thank you very much, Eugene. Eh? Uh, I think you... You, you've come with so much wisdom. Wherever you came from, I think you need to go back there. <laughs> and it is true, maybe Deca will be able to build up on this because he's a communications expert. Outcome of our lives <laughs> depend on our, largely on our communication skills. Very true. And also that leaders are readers. Eh? I don't know if there is a better example than Obama, who is a real reader. Eh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, thank you very much, Eugene. And we hope to connect with you more and do more things together. So there is, thank you. you had asked if you can be added to a WhatsApp group and I shared a link where yeah. you can fill the form. Eh? You can just fill okay. the link with you and proceed further. Okay, so well noted. Thank you very much and welcome home. That is what you normally tell uh, the people who are coming home. Welcome home. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. So, Fanon, <laughs> it's, it's on you now, Fanon. Yeah, so uh, I think uh, from the discussion, I've been uh, inspired by... Oh, can you hear me? Yes, yes, very clearly. Yeah, I've been, I've been inspired by the story of um, the, the, the issue Mwalimu has raised. Mm. That uh, most of the students in, uh, in the high school are actually beginning their poems. Or yeah. not their poems, but their compositions with the way they woke up. <laughs> and... Uh, and I think there's something as writers we can pick from that because. Yeah. Hello, Fanon. Fanon, we, we seem to lose you. Hello, Fanon. Okay. Maybe we can be able to hear. Hillary, I think Fanon may have a challenge with connection, but I know he'll come back. Hillary? Hmm? Okay, I only had one thing to say, yeah? Yeah. I realized that writers do not really have a voice in government. What do I mean? You'll find this law search of Kenya, this... Uh, what is that one for the nurses called? The medics? KPDMU. <laughs> yes. So what happens if it's a writer who needs to be represented in government? Like who, who, who gives that voice? Yeah. So maybe think about that going forward. 
then yeah, that's what I want to say. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that is a big challenge, eh? and um, a very big challenge for that matter, where we have a voice. And if you look at the history of writers' organization in Kenya, it is a very sad one, very, very sad, starting from 1973 in Makerere, where, where it's a very sad one. Eh? But uh, let's, let's, let's ponder over it. Let's think over it. It's a very sad one, though. <laughs> yeah. Ah. Okay. That's what I have to say. What would your suggestion be on the same? Uh, okay, let me think about it. I'll, I'll get back to you. <laughs> sawa, sawa. <laughs> thank uh, you. Um, okay, thank you. Uh, Fanon, I can see you are back. Sorry for the disconnection. I hope you can give it to me. Yeah, me. sorry, sorry for Yeah, yeah, I think I can continue. Yeah. So there was... There was I was uh, reading from this book uh, called uh, How Europe Underdeveloped Africa. Yeah. And it was saying that the, the, even, the, even what we are learning, even in our schools, the thing is that it has been put in the minds of um, Africans or even Kenyans yeah. that, that Africa is under, uh, uh, underdeveloped, mm. Kenya is underdeveloped, and these are the same ideas which yeah. are being put in schools. Mm. For example, for me, I was uh, I, I was I pursue I pursue I, I'm pursuing economics. Yeah. And the first lesson at the university is that the lecturer will come and say how Africa is a third world, uh, how Kenya is a third world country. Mm. So you see, but those ideas once they are incorporated into even those students once they are learning. Yeah. It means they fear to think. They fear mm. to you know you have already been told you are the worst. Yeah when you even come to writing a composition you find someone is hesitating to write uh, that maybe they uh, they even are uh, hesitating to observe what they've been able to see around them yeah and they think that a story has to be a certain way for it like the way they read it in a certain storybook written by someone else yeah so that they are feeling they are feeling already inferior and i think as writers what you can do about it yeah is uh, to to write uh, positive stories yeah about our place you know uh right uh make in, instill into the next generation that their opinions actually matter mm. by telling stories about you know issues simple issues like even eating motura simple issues like you know uh, uh see, even even uh, just uh, the stories in nairobi yeah. just simple issues that they can relate to so that they can see that stories their stories matter as well mm. Thank you very much for that. Yeah. Thank you very much. And Google yeah. has written a whole book on this, Decolonizing the Mind. Um, yeah. Thank you very much. Eh? It's an issue that we need to, even how we present our characters in, in our stories, what stereotypes are informing our, how we present those characters, how we present the characters. So it's an area that we really need to go deep into. And thank you very much for highlighting it. Okay. Uh, thank you. Liz, uh, Liz Eka Koro, <laughs> the only lady with a mask, you may give us your closing <laughs> remark. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this is my first Ecclesia. Yes. <laughs> I have not been able to attend the ones organized in Nairobi because I'm working in Kakamega. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, apart from writing, I'm a civil engineer by profession, so <laughs> it's not easy. I'm happy to, to have joined in. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, very clearly, very clearly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm very happy to have joined this Ecclesia. Mm. Um, okay, I've learned a lot, but mostly I've been challenged, number one, to be consistent. Yes. I have to admit that I don't write daily. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm taking that up and yeah. I am I'll I'll do better. Yeah, I've also learned that yeah here is better than there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So because when you are writing about what you can relate with. You know, it flows. 
rather than when you are writing someone else's experience. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, I encourage everyone to write what they can relate with. Um, I as I told you, I wrote a book in mm. Imagine a World and Create It. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, at first it was a big book, but now because I couldn't, I disagreed with the editor and all that stuff, so I had to self-publish, and I, yeah, because I was going to do it on my own, I really had to cut the volume down and, you know, do what I could manage on my own, but I'm currently working, like, on the bigger version of it, mm. and yeah. I know I'll, I'll consult you more and yeah, maybe I'll have something better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then the greatest weapon of a writer mm. is reading. Yeah. I, I agreed with that. Yeah, and okay, something else that maybe was inside this, you know, when you are reading, mm. yeah, maybe if you relate to a story, and this author has not put it the way maybe you know it. Yeah. It, it gives you an idea of something maybe to work on or something to write on or something to bring out. So it's good to read. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And that has encouraged me to yeah to continue reading. Yeah. Both related and unrelated literature, as we've been told. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and then I'm just grateful to be part of this. I look forward to joining you ah. in the next one. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Liz, Elizabeth. And where can yeah. we get your book? <laughs> okay, I shared a link. Okay, okay. Yeah, on Amazon, but I can also deliver the hard copies. Ah. Uh, yeah, a book goes at only 500 shillings <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah yeah and like i deliver i can send wherever you are in kenya yeah sour, sour. are and you the, yeah. yeah did did you receive our email are you do we have your email yes 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 i've been okay. i joined um writers guild like two years ago but i've uh -huh. been silent yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay. I've just been following, getting the emails, reading, and all that. Actually, there is something you shared about self-publishing. I, yeah. I, I actually read it before I published. I decided I'm going to publish my own book. So thank you for that. Ah, <laughs> thank you. Eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Writers Git has been helpful to me. I received the emails. Mm. Uh, thank you very yeah. much. I'll, I'll reach out to you through email and uh, okay. uh, communicate with you regarding your book. So thank you okay. very much. And next okay. week, <laughs> next week we will be able to speak about something called, uh, you know, starting a book club where you are. And uh, I hope we will share more on the same. Yes, so that yes. if you are in Kakamega, you don't feel left out. Yeah. Mm, but keep keep going. Yeah. Very, yeah. Uh, Mm -hmm. You are a civil engineer and you are imagining a world and create it. So maybe more like you'd say, imagine a world and build it. Now like you're an engineer, so you build the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, thank ah, you. Thank you very much. And keep writing and keep reading. Eh? <laughs> Asante. Lydia, Kimani, over to you. <laughs> Hello. I... Ah, thank you. Lydia, Kimani, are you there? Yes, I'm here. I'm here. Sorry. Um, I'm grateful for having this opportunity to meet lots of other people, some I haven't met before. Yeah. And um, I mean, and also, I, I've really appreciated you breaking down all those things we did in the training, you know, yeah. the do's and don'ts of writing. Yeah. Uh, because you see with this break, sometimes some of those things sleep and uh, you, you're beginning to think now, let me see what this was about. Mm. And then lastly, about um, William Decker's presentation. Yes. 
Yes, I, I think we all know that a quiet mind delivers power, but sometimes mm. we are caught up in this rat race and uh, this has always happened. And uh, now when you're at home trying to do your small writing in whichever way, and also trying to rest in between, I think that is a very good balance, you know, looking at it, yeah. So, and then I think I'd like to congratulate Fanon, Fanon Kihu. Mm. Fanon really challenges me. He's mm. so young and he's really going on and doing something every day. So, mm. Fanon, <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank you very much, Lydia. And um, thank you very much. I am, yeah, I've picked it, actually I've written it. A quiet mind delivers power. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Actually, I think I should mention this at this point. There is this philosopher who is called uh, Dekar. It's called he's called Rene Dekar. It's written as Descartes, and he came up with something that influenced Europe in a big way. It's called uh, I think, therefore I am. <laughs> it's called Cogito Ergo Sum in Latin. Um, that anyway, I'll be able to explain this another time, but that. What we think as human beings is what we make. So there is no reality out there. There is nothing out here. So it really influenced individualism. It really influenced uh, uh, capitalism in a big way. And this guy had a habit of waking up at around 10, 11. So during the, he wakes up at, in the morning, but he sleeps on bed looking up until around, for five hours, <laughs> just thinking and doing, you know, contemplating. Then he came up with this idea, just one line that influenced the world, especially Europe. So maybe it relates with what Decker was saying. Eh? <laughs> so Decker, I think you are getting more people on your side. And, and you'll have just pronounced his name as Decker. Whether you call it Decker, it's still Decker. <laughs> <laughs> I see, yeah? <laughs> OK, thank you very much, Lydia. And I hope. Uh, we keep writing, keep writing, and keep reading. Uh, Michelle, Nina, you've been very quiet. Eh? I don't know if uh, all is well. I would really wish to hear from you. Michelle? Michelle? <laughs> OK. Uh, uh, Mr. Sifuna. <laughs> You are turn to give your closing remarks before we close shop. <laughs> okay. Uh, Ms. Priscilla, are you there? If you can be able to give your closing remarks before we we close shop. Okay, Deka, you may give your closing remarks. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Gabriel. It's it's nice staying behind with the last eleven people. Eh? So the last yeah. eleven standing. Uh, it's been nice joining this session once again. I think the last time I attended fully, and Ecclesia was like about a year ago, and I feel so guilty about that. But all the same, this has been a good eye opener just to echo the sentiments of everyone who has spoken. Um, in, especially on the beat of uh, here and now, yeah. So I think that for sure resonates with me as a person, always thinking that let me gather some more experience before I write about it. But yeah, here is better than that. Uh, the other one, I don't know if this came from Priscilla or someone. It, it's a, it's something I've also experienced. Either it was Priscilla or Lydia, I'm not so sure. Uh, that <clears throat> when you're writing your own personal experiences, it's easy, it's simple, it flows, it's fun. But then when you want to write something technical, professional, somebody that you know is going to a serious audience, then it becomes hard. And then a member in this platform says, the only way to deal with it, yeah, is, 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 is just do it, wake up and do it the same way you wake up and go to work even if you don't like it. So wake up and write, yeah, even if you feel like Today is not that day you want to really write well, yeah? Just do it because writing daily, as also you say, Dinda, then mm. that's what accumulatively gives us progress. So thank you. And thank you very much for Hello. Hello. Yes, uh, yes. You getting me? Yes. 
Oh, sorry, I was to give my uh, last remarks, uh, but I realized that my mic was muted. Huh? Okay. Yeah, uh, very quickly, one, uh, kudos to the Writers Guild for organizing such a, a wonderful session. Yeah. It has been a learning experience. The whole uh, evening we've been here, I think everybody goes uh, back to, um, with uh, a very uh, a strong message that he has learned in the journey. Personally, I picked the six um, uh, steps of writing, uh, mm -hmm. very, very uh, uh, well elaborated. But somebody put a, a direct question, now that I'm uh, the only Mualimu here who is interacting with the students, and yeah. uh, his concern was, uh, are we uh, producing um, uh, students that are just uh, regurgitating uh, information in uh, what we call cut and paste? Are our students not creative enough to write? And uh, they must start with, uh, with uh, I woke up, and uh, that is when the story begins. Hello? Yes, 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 we, are, we can hear you. <laughs> yeah, I, I can tell you most authoritatively that yeah. uh, what ails, the rains, uh, where the rain started beating our, our scholars, our students, either at the kindergarten level or at the highest pinnacle of uh, intellectual uh, caliber at the university is lack of reading. The other day mm -hmm. I was in town, uh, uh, my friend, along Moy Avenue. Yeah. And, uh, in the characteristic nature of students when there is a strike, the mm. inverse of Nairobi students were on rampage. And uh, they got liberty to at least break the law. They say that uh, hey, there are two people who are above law, the president and the comrades. So they uh, decided to uh, to start helping themselves on the nearby thing. I saw them, some group putting, uh, uh, breaking into books and running away with clothing. Others were breaking into very silly things such as uh, we're picking a chicken from Kentuck and running away with it, but there was a bookshop next to the <laughs> next to the Moy Avenue that stood so intact. No repair, <laughs> break into that bookshop and steal even a single book. And when I passed by, I saw one book going close to sixteen thousand Kenyan shillings, and nobody dared. Somebody said that if you want to hide something from the Kenyan mindset, I don't know whether this is true. Just put it in a book. Our students are not reading. And for us as writers, we must also motivate reading because we cannot write what is not being consumed. You get mm. that? Yeah. So it is incumbent upon us. And I think the writers give will also, uh, as, as you do these strategies, they will yeah. also be geared towards uh, building a reading culture in our country. So that we have a generation of uh, students or a group that are reading. You get my brother? Yes, yes, yes. There is a big problem. Our learners are not reading. If they are reading, they are reading Facebook, they are reading Instagram, they are reading uh, uh, what? All, all digital media uh, things. Give them a, a, a 32 page book, an yeah. 120 book, a 400 pages book to actually go through the manual pages and read through a story that sometimes yeah. is so captivating when you start reading one chapter, you cannot put it down. Our students will complain, no, Malimo, I cannot. That book is so boring, it's so, it's so voluminous. They don't want to read through the manual pages and read in between the lines. So I think as a writer's guild, we also need to uh, look at how are we going to build a generation that is interested in reading. Mm. And there's a difference between reading uh, online and reading manually the books that have been published. <laughs> Thank you very much, Banasfuna. It's very funny how you put it that, you know, the bookshop was standing intact. No one... <laughs> <laughs> nobody! Nobody! No, nobody there had bre break into. <laughs> that one is on record. Go to the University of Nairobi students. And yeah. I was like, are we born of a lesser God? These are the pinnacle of our intellectual epitome. Yes, they cannot steal a book to go and read. <laughs> they, are in, uh, they are stealing uh, chicken. What is a piece of chicken going at? 500 shillings or what? They are stealing uh, the latest models from a boutique. You see a uh, uh, girl's camper with, uh, with a dress or, or, or a, 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 a what? Eh? Yet they, are not, they don't know that in the books lies the most secret of the knowledge that you can emancipate their brains can emancipate their thinking, and so they become the, the best that they can be. 
Thank it you very really much. Me. It really pains. It pains me, my brother, because uh, in paper three, the English is tested in three papers here in the country. Yeah. And the most worst performed paper is mm. usually paper three, which is uh, literary appreciation. Yeah. Out, out of sixty marks, you can get an average of maybe twenty-eight out of sixty. Huh? Yeah, yeah. And that tells you that our Kenyan students yeah. are not reading. And they are inheriting this from their parents. They are inheriting <laughs> this even from some of their teachers. Because yeah. as teachers, we also we also push them so hard. Can you read? Have you read uh, Who Moved My Cheese? But you've not read it yourself. Mm, mm. <laughs> so for us, some, somebody has said it here, that readers are leaders. Mm. We must lead by... Huh? Preaching exactly. water and taking that particular water. We cannot mm. be here aligned to ourselves that, oh, let us read and write. And reading has no uh, professionalism. My sister from Kakamega, the very good soft spoken uh, girl who has moved me with her intonation, said that she is an engineer. Huh? Yeah. I, I, I just want to tell her that uh, in the neighborhood was a former. Uh, Kakamega principal high school, uh, high school, uh, Kakamega high school principal called uh, Oliver Minish, who mm -hmm. was uh, a teacher of physics, but he has mm -hmm. done a lot in the literary world. So, mm -hmm. yes, she might be a civil engineer, but if God has called her to come and put input uh, start something to the literary world, mm -hmm. why not, my sister? Just come and compliment this journey. Thank but it you. really pains me that a lot. That a lot is, is 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 given into writing, but consumption is a big problem. So as the writers guild, I'm giving you a challenge, my brother. Yes, yes. Let us also build on how can we make reading interesting. Thank you very much. Thank it you has, very much. <laughs> it has been a wonderful evening. Ah, uh, Sante Sana, bro. Ah, uh, Sante Sana, and thank you very much for that. I'm going to share something in the chat. A uh, project. I'm requesting you to read it because it is part of what we will be. So it's a very good place to end and a very good place to start next week's session. So allow me just to, if we can hear from Priscilla, if you are back, and uh, and Ian, if you if you are around, you can give us your closing remarks briefly. Then we close. Priscilla, are you around? Okay, Ian, Ian, are you there? Hello, yes, I'm available. Yes, please. You may give us your closing remarks, then we can close. Okay, okay. I I, I can say that the session has been uh, wonderful, educative, and also I've been able to interact with various uh, scholars, various writers, various authors, and I'm appreciative of that. And also, let's keep up with the energy. You know, each and every day comes with a different story. Yeah, like uh, for those doing short stories, I, a full day can be also another short story. And mm -hmm. for those writing uh, full novels or novellas, a day also can combine a chapter in your story. So keep up with the good work. Let's meet at the top. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Yes, yes, Priscilla, we can hear you. Yeah. We listen, eh? <laughs> I went mute. I don't know what happened. Ah. Yeah. So I was saying it's never too late. That's what I've learned. It's never too late. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I should be consistent. Yeah. I should yeah. be consistent in reading. And yeah. uh, if I am to write anything, I should start now. And I should have specific time to do it. I want to I want to agree with Hillary yeah. on where um, he was saying that uh, the the first world think that we are third world country. Yeah. And, uh, how he said that uh, when you uh, when you are idle or lazing around is when you come up with many projects. Yeah. And yeah. on that note, I'd like to touch on the on what Corona has taught us that we have. Uh, good brains in the country. Yeah. Because yeah. the whole time we are seeing university people uh, producing our ventilators and making masks and also protective gears which we were importing. Yeah. 
So I think as much as uh, first world that we are third world, we are also coming up very well. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You can uh, have yeah. yeah, there's something else I would like to request. Huh? Yes, 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 Priscilla. I don't know when you normally hold the Zoom calls, like, um, like I work from 8 to 5. Yeah. I'm only here because of the break. Today is not my working day. Oh, yeah. So I don't, oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if you normally hold them over the weekends or it's during the week. I don't know. Okay, actually, um, we did a poll. We, we asked our writers the preferred time for them. Most of them preferred weekend in the afternoon. So for this specific session, it was a trial. We were just trying. <laughs> so probably we will go to Saturday in the afternoon because that is what most people preferred. But we'll be able to communicate this way in advance. So thank you for raising that up. Normally we have sessions on Friday in the afternoon and there is a rationale behind it, but for these specific Zoom meetings or online meetings, we will probably go to Saturday in the afternoon and we'll be able to communicate that in the course of this week after we've analyzed the feedback that the writers gave. Yeah, so with that, thank you very much everyone. I, I, ask, I remind you to keep safe and keep reading and keep writing. So let's meet again next week. We will communicate as we communicated with you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>